Now, in today's video, we are going to be talking about a high level overview of what an investment bank is. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Afsal Hussain. You can find out a bit more about me through the social media links below, or you can check out my website, which is www.afsalhussain.com. If you aren't already, make sure you follow me on Instagram over here and on LinkedIn over here. For those of you that are new here, I post a weekly video every Wednesday, helping you break into banking, finance, business, consulting, and more types of careers. The reason I'm doing this video is because it's internship, insight week, grad scheme application season. And so there are a lot of students out there who I'm sure want to know a bit more about what an investment bank is. And so this video is for you. Simply put, let me give you an example. When you go down the high street and you walk into a Santander or a Barclays or a HSBC, a retail bank, those banks are there to serve who? Myself and you, the average person, the general public. So high street banks or retail banks are there to give loans and take deposits from the average person. And then you've got investment banks. So investment banks are basically doing the same thing as well as a few more things which we'll go into more detail on. But investment banks primarily, they don't serve, you know, the average person on the high street. They serve companies, so large corporations, they serve governments, they serve businesses, and they serve ultra high net worth or really rich individuals. So the high street bank serves people like me and you, and the investment banks serve large companies, governments, and rich people. That's the basic distinguishing factor between a retail or high street bank and an investment bank. Before we go into the different roles and areas of an investment bank that we need to know about, you might be wondering what's the difference between like a global investment bank and a boutique investment bank or just an investment bank. So a global investment bank is an investment bank that has lots of different divisions that offer lots of different services as well as investment banking. So investment banking or the investment banking division is only one part of the front office of an investment bank and then there's other areas like asset management, sales and trading, research, private banking. So those come together to form a global investment bank and then you might have a boutique investment bank or strictly an investment bank which primarily focuses on investment banking. For this video we are going to be focusing on global investment banks so the likes of Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Credit Suisse, Bank of America, Merrill Lynch, Morgan Stanley, all the big names that you come across more so than some of the other more niche or specifically corporate finance investment banking focused boutiques, the banks such as Lazard, the Evercores and the more specialist investment banks. So we're gonna focus on the globals. It's important to distinguish the key features of these banks. So the revenue generating areas and the client facing areas are called the front office. They're at the front of the firm, they meet the clients, they see the clients, they build relationships and the other areas like HR, finance, accounting, technology, these are the back office, they don't really get much client interaction, they're not revenue generating and they are considered the back office. If you want more information on the front office versus the back office of an investment bank, check out this video here where I go into more detail on what the different divisions do. Going back to our informal definition, investment banks are responsible for serving companies, corporations, governments, and high net worth individuals, what does that actually mean? So one thing that investment banks do is advisory. They provide advisory services to their clients. When I say advisory services, you might be wondering what on earth is advisory services? What does that mean? What does it entail? Advisory services can take many different forms. One of which might be, let's say a company is hoping to join or merge with another company but it needs advice on how much it should be paying to do so, how it should actually go about doing so, what's the process, what legal procedures are there. That's where it might call an investment bank to advise on this merger. Similarly, if one company wants to take over another company, they might go to an investment bank and ask for help on this procedure or the best way to go about doing the takeover. The reason they go to the investment bank is because the investment bank tends to be a specialist in these mergers and acquisitions. And so that's one way the investment bank is providing advisory services to its clients. Another form of advisory might be, let's say we've got Facebook and it wants to, initially it was a private company, 
but now it wants to be a public company. What that means is it can offer its shares or its equity to the public. So you and I can buy stocks in Facebook. Facebook doesn't know exactly how to go about doing so and so it goes to an investment bank. Now the investment banking division of an investment bank or a global investment bank will advise Facebook on the best way to IPO, do an initial public offering, provide Facebook's shares to the general public. So that's another way that you know a company or a client of a global investment bank will receive advisory services from the bank. In addition, let's say we've got a company like Apple and they want to raise lots of money so that they can invest in more research and development to create the next iPhone or the next iPad or whatever product that they want to create. They need to raise this money, but they don't know how to go about raising it. Should they raise it by issuing debt or should they raise it by offering their shares and so raising it through equity? In that case, they would go to an investment bank and get the equity capital markets team or the debt capital markets team to advise them on the best approach to take. And so that's another form of advisory services that the investment bank is providing to a client. So there's many forms of advisory and these kind of fit into the investment banking division within a global investment bank. Another service that global investment banks provide is asset or fund management. So this is where large pension schemes or large corporations have large pools of money and they need to invest it into the financial markets. And so they go to the asset management division of an investment bank and they give them that money. They tell them what their risk appetite is, how long they want to invest it, what their purpose of investment is. And so the asset management division will charge them a fee in order to manage that money and hopefully get them the return that they're after. They are providing asset management or investment management services to large companies, pension schemes, sovereign wealth funds and insurance companies. Similarly, another thing that they do, they do this investing for companies and large clients, but they also do it for individuals. They do it for very rich, high net worth individuals. We're talking celebrities, very wealthy individuals who have inherited a lot of money from their families, individuals with lots of money. So they have capital, they need to invest it in the financial markets to preserve its value or in order for it to grow over the long run. And so an investment bank might have the private wealth management division take care of those type of duties for the clients. Investment banks also have research divisions. So this is where you know individuals are researching specific areas of the financial markets, creating a lot of interesting reports, and you know they're sharing that with their clients. So the clients can gain an insight into the various things that might be of interest to them, or you know particular trends that are happening across the financial markets. So that's where the research division of the investment bank comes in. Another way that an investment bank serves its clients is through market making. So I'm sure you've all seen the sales and trading floor or the markets division of an investment bank. You've got all the traders with lots of screens. These individuals are, let's say I'm a trader. There's a client, let's say Apple, they want to trade into a financial security. And so as a trader, I'm going to create a market for them. I'm going to, they're going to tell me what they want. I'm going to take the money. They, the buyer, I'm going to connect them with a seller, someone who's selling what they're after create a market, they're gonna do the transaction and I'm gonna take a small fee for creating that market for these two individuals. So market making on the trading floor is basically connecting buyers and sellers and taking a fee because you have enabled a transaction to take place which was in the interest of both parties involved. So that's another way investment banks are you know, providing a service to their clients. One very important thing to note with regards to a global investment bank They've got the markets division, so you know the trader who's creating a market for their clients, and they've got the advisory business, so the investment bank. Now they are both privy to a lot of information about their clients, and so there are these things called a Chinese wool between them. So the corporate advisory business and the markets division are not allowed to interact with each other because these guys have lots of you know specific information about their clients. So Facebook, for example, when they were you know, interested in going public, the investment bankers on this side knew a lot of information about it. If they went and told the traders ahead of time, the traders could have easily made a lot of money from executing the right trades before the rest of the public could do so. And so there's a Chinese wall, that's the term for a Chinese wall, it's basically a legal wall where you are not allowed to communicate with each other because you have access to, you know, specific secret information 
that the market doesn't have access to. And that's pretty much a high level overview of what a global investment bank is and how it serves its clients. If you found this video insightful, it would mean a lot to me if you could give it a thumbs up. Let's try and get 500 likes on this video. And if you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I do a weekly video every Wednesday. Leave your comments and suggestions below for any videos that you want me to make or any feedback or any you know comments that you have on this video. Leave them below. If you are subscribed, make sure you turn on post notifications and I will catch you in the next video. Peace. Every year when the academic year starts, I tour, so last year I toured the UK, going to different universities, regardless of their ranking within the league tables, and talking to them about everything to do with securing insight weeks, internships, and grad schemes at the best investment banks in the world, the best consulting firms, professional service firms. So it's literally where I travel the UK and talk to university students and societies and help them help themselves really. If you're interested in being part of my university tour 2019-2020, drop an email to info at afsalhussein.com and put the subject university tour and I'll hopefully be seeing you at your university in September onwards. So if you're interested, do drop.